Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And if you are new here, then welcome. My name is Mia Danielle and I chat all about holistic and clutter-free spaces. So if that's something you're into, be sure to click subscribe and turn on those notifications. I release new videos every Tuesday. Now today I'm gonna to talk about things to declutter before 2023 or before the new years. I'm a firm believer that you can curate your space because our environments are so impactful to really support you in any future goals or changes or just general fresh starts that you're hoping to have. And so that's what we're talking about today. I have it divided into two different categories of things to declutter before the new year. The first category is all about looking back. Now, I know that whenever we're getting excited about a fresh start or a new year and like the trajectory that we want our lives to go shooting forward, we wanna be very forward focused, right? It's exciting to look at the future, not so exciting sometimes to do audits and to evaluate the past. But I do think that the best place to start is looking backwards so that you can actually more easily get to where you're wanting to go. So let's talk about some of the things that fall under this category of looking back. Starting with old hobbies, things that you were into for a period of time, which we all pretty much get into something for a period of time. I was really into crocheting for a while, and then I started to realize when I put it away for the summer and the spring that I'm actually into crocheting in the fall and winter. It just, it really helps me to have some kind of a cozy vibe type of task, you know? So for me, in my mind, crocheting is now my fall and winter pastime. And so I know that I'm not gonna need those things out and about and readily accessible for the rest of the year because the data has told me that I don't use it during those times. But there have been other things that I've been into in the past that maybe I hadn't used for many years that I had still held on to back before I started decluttering all of those things. And it can be really easy to hold on to those things thinking that, someday I might get back into this, or I really enjoyed it in that part of my life, right? So maybe I'll get back into it next weekend and it just never happens. I think this is where those audits and evaluations come in really handy because you're able to see the data of like time spent actually investing into this hobby or pastime, or you know how frequently you actually used any of those belongings over the past year or six months or multiple years maybe. I get it. I held on to my guitar from college for way beyond the time that I probably should have because I definitely was not learning to play it or use it. I held on to my art supplies for a long time before I finally decided, you know, I enjoy art. I love art. I appreciate art, but I'm not actually using these art supplies. I'm not regularly creating these big oil canvas paintings that I did when I was in the classes to do them. So let me know down in the comments, are there things that you see yourself kind of being pulled into hobby wise and then leaving behind and maybe still holding on to the materials or the equipment that goes along with that thing even years later. Number two is outgrown belongings. This is especially true if you have kids. There's really no need to hold on to things that just straight up don't fit them anymore. And holding on to a ton of clothes just for the future in case your younger kid wants them someday or you have a, a future you know, baby and holding on to baby clothes. I mean, I understand that a lot of people are able to save tons of money by doing that, but you just have to be cautious and smart about the way that you do it. Maybe you don't hold on to everything, but you hold on to the best things or the things that you know you really got value out of. You don't have to keep everything just because you owned it once. Sometimes you might find that those things that you held on to or that you had the first time around aren't really worth keeping for the second time around because you just barely use them. But it's not just the kids. I mean, we change, our bodies change as we age. It's not necessarily all about gaining weight or losing weight. Sometimes we just change, things fit us differently. Or our style changes and the way that we spend our day-to-day -day lives change and we just don't need those clothes because they don't fit into our lifestyle anymore. So it's a great time before you try to dig all into this fresh start and whatever changes you have coming in the upcoming year that you let go of the things that aren't really gonna fit in with those changes. Number three is holiday decor that didn't get used or that broke in the process. I feel like just about every year we have Christmas lights or Christmas, you know, globe balls that stop working by the end of the season for some reason. Even if we buy them brand new, that happens to us a lot that we have lights that will stop working 
before we even complete the season. But regardless, maybe you've had your lights for several years and now they've given out, or maybe you had some ornaments that broke when you were in the process of putting up the tree. That tends to happen just about every year for us as well. Um, so any equipment that's broken or that you just did not reach for. There have definitely been years where some of the ornaments that we had used all of the years prior, the girls were like, I don't want to use those this year. Like, I don't like the, the pink icicle things anymore. I'm just not into it. And so maybe you've reached that point for some of your holiday decor and it's time to just let it go because you're probably not going to be using it next year either. Now you have a little time until you actually start putting your holiday things away, especially if we're talking about Christmas versus the fall and Halloween and Thanksgiving decor that you may have used or whatever holidays you celebrate. But you can keep that fresh in mind whenever you do take down your winter decor that you are letting go of the things that you don't need to be storing for an entire another year. Number four is a little bit deeper and a little bit harder, and that is releasing negative relationships, toxic relationships, relationships that you don't need to be tied to anymore, even though you know you may be in the habit of being tied to these toxic or negative relationships. If you're wanting to make any positive changes for yourself and for your life, and you're wanting to you know, become a better version of yourself and just grow, right? It can be really difficult to do that if you're still surrounded by other mindsets that are keeping you down where you used to be. I mean, that's just the truth of it. So as difficult as it can sometimes be to cut ties with people that you've become used to, being around. If it's necessary, and it is the time, and you know when it's necessary and when it's the time, when you're feeling like you're constantly being drained, or like you can't get excited about reaching new levels because this other person keeps giving you these reality checks and bringing you back down, you know, telling what you can and can't do. Uh, whenever you start to feel like that is becoming oppressive in your life and it's time to let that go. It doesn't have to be a big explosive messy thing, but it is okay to release relationships that are keeping you held down and making you feel bad. I think that there's a lot of truth that you are who you surround yourself with. And if you want to become something more and you want to grow, a lot of that comes down to what have you been surrounding yourself with? what outside thoughts are currently being shoved into your daily mindset, you know? Obviously, that doesn't apply to everybody, but I'm just going to put that right there for the people that it does apply to. And number five has to do with body changes. So this could be related to products. It could be related to equipment. And it's not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. Sometimes it's just a thing. There are things that we buy whether it is, um, you know, products for our skin or an ergonomic chair because all of a sudden now we have back issues or we had some kind of an injury that's changed the types of products that we need in order to support ourselves on a daily basis. Or it could be dietary changes that you've made because you've noticed that you have more energy when you eat less of this and more of that. So I encourage you for number five here to take a look at your body and what it currently needs in order to be the most optimized, best next level version of yourself that's going to feel, you know, soothed and supported on a regular basis. You know, at some point in your life, you go from needing the anti-acne creams to needing mature skin creams that have totally different things in them. And there are a whole lot of stages in between that. One thing that we're kind of constantly having to do a balance with is finding out, well, what is right for me now? It may not be what was right for me a year ago. This could also be related to short-term changes. And I'm saying this as somebody who, uh, you know, recently went through a pregnancy and delivery and all of these good things. And it's a positive experience, right? But my body went through changes. There were different types of products that I needed for that period of my life. And I did not need some of the other products. And there were different types of clothes that I needed to be able to wear. And there were some clothes that I decided I was never likely going to wear again after this experience. There are just different events that happen in our lives that change the types of belongings that we need and we'll use going forward. And a lot of times people just kind of hold on to that and add the new things in without releasing the old and making space for something new. So that's looking back, but let's talk about looking forward. There are five things to consider when you're talking about looking forward, which is the fun part. It's the exciting part, right? But there are some things that you might need to declutter in order to move forward in some of these areas. 
So for example, number one would be if you're moving locations, you bought a new house, you're moving things around inside of the house that you currently live in, that's going to be shifting around belongings and furniture and essentially feel like you're moving to a new house. There are going to be some things that you need to let go of from the previous space and the previous environment. Furniture that no longer fits or works with the new intended space. Even if it's the same room, there will likely be some furniture, some belongings, maybe some decor that just does not fit with the change of that space. Maybe needing to go from a toddler bed to a twin bed or from, you know, a loft bed to a full-size bed. Or again, it could be that you've moved locations and you're needing to let go of some of the old things and create space for some of the new things. Even when moving to new houses, it baffles me that so many people will invest so much time and energy into moving all of their belongings and then deciding what they want to keep once they get to their new home. Don't do that to yourself. I've moved before and it's so much easier if you only box up and pack the things that you actually want to bring with you and leave the rest behind. Or, you know, like decide what you want to do with the rest while it's still in the previous location. Even if you're just updating a single room in your home or a single level of your home and you're not actually moving locations, the same rules apply. You don't have to keep all of the belongings that were previously in there and box them up and move them to the garage or find a place for them somewhere else throughout the house, sometimes you can just let those things go and let the space be the new thing that it's going to be. Number two might be a new job or a new equivalent of a new job, right? A new way that you're going to be spending and investing your time, new ways of being productive in the year coming forward than you were in the previous year. And so this is going to mean decluttering some of the previous documents, some of the previous equipment. You know, maybe you had an office space that you were using before that needs to be totally revamped. And some of those previous things need to be let go of or changed and altered in some way. Maybe your job is that you're a stay-at-home mom and looking forward into the next year, you can already see that it's going to look quite a bit different the way you spend your day-to-day time, the way that you need to manage different tasks or projects or schedules that are going to be happening inside of your home. Um, And there are things that are going to need to be let go of in order to prepare for that and really set you up for a smooth transition and smooth success in the upcoming year. Number three could be new additions. Maybe you have a new baby that's coming into the picture that you're going to have in your life this new year, like me, that wasn't in your life previous years, like a whole entirely new human, right? There's a lot of change that comes with that. There's a lot of um, things that you need to change around the house in order to prepare for that. But it could even be a new grandbaby or a family member who's moving in with you for the year or a pet. Maybe this is the year that you're going to be getting a pup. And uh, I love my Charlie to death. But there were definitely some considerations that we had to make whenever we brought a pup into our home for the first time. Current products or equipment that aren't exactly kid or animal friendly that you need to consider before you come into this new time in your life. So again, there are some things that you're very likely going to need to let go of if you're looking to add in some new additions in the upcoming year in order to make that process transition a little more smoothly and to feel like you're fully ready to accept and embrace whatever this new addition is. Number four is things that don't fit with your New Year's resolution or with your word of the new year. I haven't been so into New Year's resolutions over the past probably five years as I used to be. I don't really focus a whole lot on those because I feel like they fail more often than they succeed. I think that, you know, focusing on things like systems and habits and routines and things that you can just slowly stack to bring change can sometimes be a little more helpful than some big grand goal that you want to achieve without breaking it down. But I do really enjoy picking a word of the year, you know, picking a sensation or something that I want to experience more of in the coming year. So in the past, I've used words like strength, meaning physical and emotional resilience, right? Like building arm strength and also building a little bit tougher skin. Um, I've used ease in the past. Whenever the previous year was feeling just like there was a lot of growth and a lot of busyness and just bam, bam, bam things going on and it started getting a little stressful, the following year, my word was ease and everything that I did centered around how can I do this in a way that brings more ease and that isn't so stressful. So I do think that like having a focus like that is really good. And so anything that's not going to fit 
with whatever your new focus is, whether it's a resolution, a word, or something else, it's a good idea to go ahead and remove those items. Because again, if you keep surrounding yourself with the old, it's going to be really hard to bring in the new. Change doesn't really happen by just layering things on, right? You still have all of these old negative habits and all of these belongings that remind you of the way that you used to do things. And then you expect to come in and just layer on all of these new things and get these positive changes. And in order to really make space for the positive changes to take root, you need to remove the old things first. Which brings me to number five, which is general clutter and excess. Maybe you have just a lot of stuff or a lot of one type of thing that doesn't exactly fall into one of the previous nine categories that we mentioned, but your life could really open up and blossom by letting go of some of that extra stuff that's taking up your space for growth. And I say that because I think that one of the amazing benefits of getting the clutter out and even living a clutter-free life is that it allows for and supports growth. It's kind of like pruning, you know, pruning a bush, pruning a plant, removing the old dead leaves or the things that aren't bearing fruit and so that the rest of the plant or the tree can bear fruit and thrive. (laughs) Even though I have like a terrible black thumb, I understand the metaphor and I have seen it, you know, work that way inside of my life. And I think that this is especially impactful for people who don't necessarily have a clear vision of what they want coming in the new year or the upcoming future. You know, those people who feel like I feel a little stagnant and I would love to have a change. I just have no clue what that change is. The way that I've seen it work time and time again is when people create space for that change. Things come into your life that you just never really expected, you never really planned for. You're able to just get creative and get new ideas with the new fresh space. So sometimes it doesn't work the way we all think it works. It would be great if we all had an exact idea of what trajectory we wanted come January of every year, but the reality is sometimes we don't, and sometimes we feel like we need a change and we aren't really sure what direction that should go in. And I believe that preparing for a change, for a direction of any kind, can oftentimes get you to where you want to be. It's kind of like that that whole taking action first in order to see the results you want even before they're clear. So here's to prepping for an amazing new year this year and every year, and I'll chat with you next week.